So, hello everyone. My name is Gargi Suman and I am here to discuss about classification of palatal rugoscopy. Before knowing the classification, firstly we should understand what could be the background of palatal rugae and how it is related with the forensic purposes. So, as we all know, Human identification has been studied since 14th century and it has gradually advanced for forensic purposes. Traditional methods such as dental, fingerprint and DNA comparisons are probably the most techniques used in this context, allowing the fast and secure identification processes. But in some circumstances where the identification of an individual by fingerprint or dental record comparison is difficult, then in this case, the palatal rugae, well, palatal rugoscopy or also known as palatoscopy, may be considered as an alternative source of material. Palatal rugae have been equated with the fingerprint and are unique to an individual. It is equated with the fingerprint because of its uniqueness and it is a unique to an individual. That's why it is equated with the fingerprints. It can be special interest in identifiers cases and also in certain conditions where there are no fingers to be studied such as burned bodies or bodies that underwent severe decomposition. Thus, because of its uniqueness, post-mortem resistance, overall stability and additional low utilization cost makes palatal rugae an ideal forensic identification parameter. So, because of these four reasons, parallel rugae and ideal forensic identification parameter ki tarah hum isko use karte hain. Now, the question arises, what is palatal rugoscopy? Palatoscopy or palatal rugoscopy is the name given to the study of palatal rugae in order to establish person's identity and their uniqueness to individual can provide a reliable source of identification. Palatal rugae, what is palatal rugae? Palatal rugae are irregular asymmetric ridges of mucous membrane extending literally from the incisive papilla and the anterior part of the median palatal rugae. Here in this diagram, you can clearly see this is incisive papilla, this part is incisive papilla. Below the incisive papilla is mid palatine rugae, also known as median palatal rugae. And either both the side of me uh, on both the side of median palatal rugae, there are irregular asymmetric ridges of mucous membrane known as palatal rugae. So palatal rugae are well protected by lips, cheek, and tongue, and are thus protected from the external insults such as fire, high impact trauma. They do not change shape with age and reappear after trauma or surgical procedures. In forensic dentistry, palatal rugae pattern can lead us to important information and help in person's identification. So, in first diagram, you can we can see this uh, palatine tonsils. This is palatine tonsils. This is palatoglossal arc. This is palatoglossal arc and after the palatoglossal arc, palatopharyngeal arc. Why it is called palatopharyngeal arc? Because of, uh, because it connected with the pharynx. Pharynx is the part of the buccal cavity, uh, which is a common passage for food and air pharynx. So it is called as palatopharyngeal arc. In diagram B, we can clearly see this is a hard palate, this is a soft palate. Why it is called as hard palate and this is soft palate? Because in hard palate, uh, when we touch our hard palate, uh, we experience there is a bone. And in soft palate, there is only muscles. This is incisive papillae and these all are palatine rugae. Here we get palatine, palatine rugae. And this and the study of these palatal rugae are known as palatoscopy or palatal rugoscopy. So next is how are palatal rugae formed? 
we have talked about what is parietal rugoscopy, what is parietal rugae, now how these parietal rugae form. So, these parietal rugae are formed in the third month uh, or we can say in the third month in uterus from the heart connective tissue covering the bone. Once they were formed, they do not experience any changes except in length due to normal growth. The pattern of the orientation of the rugae remains unchanged throughout the life. And this is the most important property of this rugae that they are remain unchanged throughout the life. The number of rugae on each side of the palate varies between 3 and 5. So, the next is historical background. What could be the historical background of this palatal rugoscopy? It is a short and sweet uh, historical background. There is no detailed history of this palatal rugoscopy. I have considered only the important one that we should know and we should keep in our mind that these is that uh, in this historical background we should keep in our mind and this is an important and short and sweet one. So let's say start. The palatal rugae were first described by Winslow in 1732. The earliest illustration of palatal rugae was probably by Santorini in 1775 wherein he put a drawing depicting a three wavy lines crossing the midline of the palate. The midline of the palate is called the median palatal ruffle. The first suggestion for the use of palatal rugae as a method of personal identification was suggested by Harrison Annan in 1889. <clears throat> then the first palatal classification system was put by Goria in 1911. The term palatal rugoscopy was proposed in 1932 by a Spanish investigator named Provo Hermosa. Then embryologically, as I have earlier told you, that embryologically, palatal rugae appears around the third month of intrauterine life from the covering of connective tissue and the palatal process of maxillary bone. Once formed, they may experience changes in their size due to growth and is generally maintained. So next we have Analyzing and recording palatal rugae. There are many methods for analyzing and recording palatal rugae. First is intraoral inspection. This is the probably used method as it is easy and economical. Second is photographs and by making impressions. Also the easiest and the cheapest. Third is the stereoscopy can obtain a three-dimensional image of palatal rugae anatomy. It is based on the analysis of two pictures taken with the same camera from two different points using special equipments. Fourth is calco-rugoscopy or the overlay print. The palatal rugae in a maxillary cast can be used in order to perform comparative analysis. Fifth, fifth is stereophotogrammetry which by using a special device called Trace Maker allows for an accurate determination of the length and position of every single palatal rugae. Then sixth is maxillary dental cast. Due to simplicity, price and reliability, the study is the most used technique. Now for a dentulous victim. What is the meaning of a dentulous when the victim have no teeth at all, then the victim is known as a dentulous victim. Some so for a dentulous victim, some, reg some recognition methods are available, such as comparing the anatomy of the paranasal sinuses and comparing the bony patterns seen on the radiographs. So these are some techniques or methods for analyzing and recording palatal rugae. Now, the next is the classification. This is the main topic of mine. Classifications of palatal rugae. So, first classification was developed by Goria in 1911. Uh, 
In this, the Ruge pattern was categorized in two ways. First, specifying the number of Ruge. Second, specifying the extent of the Ruga zone relative to the teeth. In this system, compound Ruge of two or more branches were counted as one, whether they were V or Y shaped. So, here it is Y shaped Ruge and here it is V shaped Ruge. And in figure A and figure B, we can easily consider or we can easily clearly see that this is simple and this is primitive. The figure is consists of simple Ruge according to Korea we are talking about and in figure B, the primitive one. Mm. Now this next classification. So the second classification was given by Lopez de Leon classification in 1924. He proposed the existence of a link between a person's personality and palatal ruge. Four known types of palatal ruge: B and L S. B is for bilious personality ruge. N is for nervous personality ruge. S is for S is for sanguinary personality ruge, L for lymphatic personality ruge. The letters B and L S stands for the different personalities. The letter L and R stand for the left and right side of palate and are followed by a number which specifies the palatal ruge number on each side. The third classification was given by Trogi classification in 1932. This classification also divides Ruge in two groups, simple Ruge and compound Ruge. Simple Ruge where Ruge shapes are well defined and divided further as type A, B, C, D, E and F. Compound Ruge, Ruge are formed by union of two or more simple Ruge and were classified as type X, a polymorphic type. The compound ruge, these ruge result from two or more simple ruge unions. So here in this diagram or in this table, um, the trobo classification is given. The simple ruge is type A to uh, type F, from type A to type F. And the compound ruge formed by the union of two or more simple ruge. So he considered compound ruge as type X or we can say polymorphic ruge. Now the next classification is serial classification given in 1937. This author divides palatal ruge into four different types. Palatal ruge are classified only according to their form and no formula. In this table we can clearly see the classification type 1, type 2nd, type 3rd and type 4th and ruge type. The type 1 ruge type is posterior anterior directed ruge. Posterior anterior in this diagram, uh, the diagram first. This is the posterior anterior directed ruge. The type 2nd is ruge perpendicular to the ruge. So this is the main ruge. And these are the perpendicular ruge. So it's so this is type second. The type third is anterior posterior directed ruge. So just opposite of posterior anterior directed ruge is the type third one that is anterior posterior directed ruge. And the type four is the ruge directed in several directions. And here is the directions in this diagram. The directions, this is posterior anterior, this is perpendicular, this is multidirectional and just opposite of that posterior anterior is the anterior posterior. Now the next classification is given by De Silva classification. De Silva classification in 1938. In this, palatal ruge are divided into two groups, simple and composed, resulting from two or more simple ruge. 
so simple and composed composed resulting from two or more simple rugae and simple rugae is the simple rugae they are named according to each rugae number it is possible to classify each rugae individually describing its form but also to describe all the palatal rugae system describing each rugae type number so in this table the classification from 1 to 6 and the rugae type the line curve angle circle wavy point this classification was given by silva so in this diagram we can see how the straight rugae look like how the curve how the circle and how wavy and here is the method of classification the a side is right side, the B side is this B side is left side, and here the number is given and the here the number is given for or we can say here the number is used for classification. Now the next is Martin's classification in 1946. Martin's classification based on the form and position of each palatal rugae. This classification indicates and characterizes the following. First one is one initial rugae. The most anterior one on the right side is represented by capital letter. Here the anterior position in this table. Here we can say anterior position is denoted by the capital letter. That is P, E, L, C, A, O, S, B, T, I and A, N. Now the second one is several complementary rugae. The other right side rugae are represented by the number. Okay. So here other positions. The other right side represented by the number. That is 0 to 9. The third one on the sub-initial rugae. The most anterior one on each side is represented by capital letter. And Fourth is several sub-complementary rugae. The other left side rugae are represented by number. So according to Martins, he classified the rugae, palatal rugae, in these given four points. And to understand these four points, here so we can see in this table. <coughs> okay, so this is the Martins classification. Now the next classification is so huh. So this is the structures that was considered by Martins. This is point, these are lines, these are curves, these are angle angle is like ye log angle bana rahe hain se, aur us pe, this is 90 degree, this is something 30 or 60. So the these structures are angle. These are circles, these are sinus, yeah, these are bifurcated, trifurcated, interrupt and anomaly. And interior position is denoted by capital letter and other position is denoted by the numbers. Now the next classification is license classification in 1955. It is very simple classification. Because Lysel classify palatal rugae depending on its length only. So primary, secondary and fragmentary, he said. Uh, primary rugae is of 5 mm or more. Secondary is of 3 to 5 mm. Then fragmentary is 2 to 3. Rugae smaller than 2 mm are discarded. He didn't consider smaller than 2 mm. Rugae, he discarded, and in this so in this diagram we can see primary, fragmentary, secondary, and the table is also said the same thing which I have told you. Now the next is Basuri classification, 1961. Basuri, it distinguished between the pri principal rugae, which is the more anterior one. Label with letters in the accessory rugae, which concerns all the remaining rugae. 
labeled with numbers as seen in this table. So this is the principal Ruge classification and accessory Ruge classification. So principal Ruge कोई बोला उन्होंने इंटीरियर वाले जो थे उनको प्रिंसिपल बोल दिया और एसेसरी रुगे जो अदर थे अदर देन इंटीरियर उनको एसेसरी बोल दिया और उनको डिनोट कर दिया नंबर से और उनको डिनोट कर दिया अल्फाबेट से एंड दीज आर द रुगे एनाटॉमी मोस्टली सिमिलर विद दिस मार्टियस सिमिलर है थोड़ा थोड़ा सो इन दिस डायग्राम वी कैन सी Curved shape primary rugae, sinus shape primary rugae, angle shape primary rugae, line shape primary rugae, circular shape primary rugae. So, this is the Basuri classification. Next is Lima in 1968. Consists of four main types punctuate, straight, curved, and composite. That's it. Then, again, is also. Uh, tenth classification. Uh, so the tenth classification is in 1970. In this, they classified rugae according to their direction, branching, and symmetry and radiality. Here, the diagram clears us what is the criteria of their classification. Next is chromy system classification. In this. He also classify parietal rugae according to their size. Primary, principal rugae, accessory rugae, fragmentary rugae. It is most similar to the previous one. Here the diagram we can see most uh, what other linked and lysyl classifications. Primary ka unhone principal bol diya hai, secondary ka unhone accessory bol diya hai, and fragmentary is the same as the fragmentary. Uh, but in lysyl, fragmentary are the rugae which are of 2 mm. Here he considered the 3 mm length. The only changed or difference is this only. The next classification is the last and the next classification is Thomas and Kodze classification in 1983. It is the most accepted one. So they classify rugae patterns on their length, shape, direction, and unification. The classification proposed by Lysel in 1955 and later modified by Thomas and Kudzi. So they modified the previous classification. So this is the patterns which they used. So criteria on the basis of length, the primary rugae is of A or B type, 5 to 10 m mm, B 10 mm or more, secondary rugae 3 to 5 mm, fragmentary rugae less than 3 mm. Okay, then on the basis of shape, they consider only four structure, curved, wavy, straight and circular. Then Ruge unification on the basis of Ruge unification patterns. The two patterns, this is converging and diverging. <laughs> converging and diverging. So this is converging and this is diverging as we can see in this diagram or in figure. Then classification based on orientation of rugae in relation to the mid palatal rugae is forward, right angle and backward. So in this diagram, we can uh, in diagram in diagram A or in figure A, we can see the classification based on orientation. Forwardly directed, perpendicular, backwardly directed rugae patterns. Below this figure A, the figure B, based on the unification, based on the unification is converging and diverging. This is converging and this is diverging. Okay. Considered by Thomas and Kudze. 
and the rugae based on shape is in figure C. This is C. C in this figure. And the wa straight wavy curved circular. And in this figure we have this figure we have already studied according to its length, the rugae classified into three primary, secondary, fragmentary. So this is the last classification given by Thomas and Kudze and it is the most accepted one. So these all are the 12 classification of palatal rugoscopy or palatal rugae. Now the conclusion. Palatal rugae are very important in forensic and dental practice. Various studies show that palatal rugae can be used for person personal identification and gender determination has got wide range of importance in orthodontics and prosthodontics. Thus, the palatal rugae process, the feature of an ideal identification parameter because of its uniqueness, as I have earlier told you, because of its uniqueness, internal position, post-mortem resistance and stability. Palatal rugae is the best or method for ideal identification parameter. This is consider culture. Then anti-mortem records of palatal rugae can be obtained in dental practice in various forms. Dental cast, intraoral photographs, dental so it is the sole responsibility of the dentist and government to maintain these records for future comparisons. Thank you.